Well, uh, I'm sharing my screen, and as you can see here, the agenda. Uh, well, I would like to welcome everybody uh, who is available here for the presentation of the second uh, thematic uh, seminar. It will concern uh, packaging and environment, how packaging is environmentally friendly. Uh, uh, I would like to present myself shortly. I'm Elias and Jane. I'm the managing director of cluster Lestewin. And you have my coordinate on this page. I was, I, I was, I'm in charge of uh, Lestewin for 2000, since 2015. Before that date, I was in the industry and uh, uh, I had a, a company of consultancy uh, before in 2000, between 2006 and 2013, I was uh, managing the development at Imag Group uh, for the brands of laser and AGV helmets. Then uh, uh, I also worked in Czech Republic uh, for two to three years as an operation and quality director at Hilar SRO in Proste of Czech Republic. Let's go with our uh, packaging concerns. Um, every year, about 400 million tons of plastics are produced worldwide. 40% of these plastics, which means 160 million tons, are destined for packaging. Plastics are a material of choice in packaging applications because of their performance, cost effectiveness, and durability. To be useful, packaging must safely protect and deliver a product from the manufacturer to the consumer. Packaging must meet regulatory requirements. For example, pharmaceutical and drug packaging is tightly regulated. So is any plastics packaging that comes into contact with foods. What are the packaging markets? We have to consider in this uh, presentation some five different markets. Food and beverage, which is perhaps the most important uh, from from airtight wraps to shelf-stable bottles and containers, plastic packaging plays a key role in delivering a safe food supply. From farm to table and is a material of choice for freezing foods for longer-term storage. Plastics have also driven innovations in packaging design. For example, Modified atmosphere packaging helps preserve food freshness by capturing a reduced oxygen air mixture in a plastic package. This technique can extend a product's shelf, shelf life by slowing the growth of bacteria. The second market is the consumer packaged goods. The adaptability of plastic packaging allows it to meet a variety of needs for consumer goods. As packaging moves from design phase through to recovery disposal, the varying types of plastic and their unique properties enable many of the choices made along the way. Color, weight, size, shape, utility, printing, protection, and so on. Plastics help bring home more product with less package. Plastic packaging in general is lightweight and strong. Different plastics can be molded, extruded, cast, and blown 
into seemingly limitless shapes and films or forms. This resourcefulness often delivers while using minimal resources, creating less waste, consuming fewer resources and creating fewer CO2 emissions that than alternative materials. Plastics make packaging more efficient, which ultimately conserves resources. Healthcare, which is the third market here, highly valued for adaptability, protective properties and cost effectiveness, plastics are uniquely uniquely suited to meet the stringent standards and requirements of the medical and health care packaging industry. Plastics enable innovations that help to protect products from damage and keep ingredients safe and guard against contamination of health care products. From thermoformed thermoform blister and trays to caps, bottles and vials and pouches, pouches bags and overwrap, plastics are the workhorse at the heart of medical packaging solution that must meet the medical and pharmaceutical industry rigorous compliance requires. Plastics are the perfect materials for shipping and storing intricate devices, drugs and other medical instruments. Another important uh, market in packaging is the cosmetic and personal care. Few sectors value beauty, design and function as much as the cosmetic packaging industry. From high-end luxury cosmetics to everyday personal care products, plastic play a major role in delivering products to market. Modern luxury in the 18th and 19th centuries, perfumes, fine creams, and other high-end personal luxuries were almost exclusively packaged in glass and ceramic. However, the advent of high-tech specialty resins has enabled designers to create unusual shapes, specialties, colors, and delivery mechanisms with plastics. Whether it's a sparkling, clear, durable, diamond-faced containers or copper-hued, satin finish flexible tubes. Plastics enable lightweight, durable, and attractive packaging solutions. On what concern personal care, the personal care products Plastics are a material of choice for manufacturing shutterproof and no spill bottles, jars and tubes, caps and closers. Flexible pouches and tubes allow for improved product evacuation, which can reduce waste while maintaining visibility. Plastics also enable innovations like compact and portable packaging, which is a growing consumer trend. The last market we, uh, we can uh, mention here is the home and garden. From multi-layer films to help protect fertilizer, soil and seed, to the hemoformed rigid tubs of pre-mixed concrete, gardening pots and containers, 
plastics are behind many durable home and garden packaging solutions. Brand owners rely on plastic for their protective properties and adaptability. Now, uh, plastic is, is very good, but plastic and food packaging is creating some problems. Let's go through these uh, problems and solutions. It, in most grocery stores today, you should know it. customers are advised not to go empty-handed to do their weekly shopping. Reusable bags are the order of the day. Customers who cannot bring their own reusable bags should buy one to take home their purchases. But what may function on a small scale with the reusable bags is just impractical on a larger level with food packaging being now an essential part of our daily lives. Packaging is fundamental when it comes to protecting our products, ensuring our high standards of quality and avoiding food waste. Most of the world's population live in cities, where there are few options for independently growing food. That way, 3.5 billion people in the planet's cities buy their products away from home. And these products usually come packaged. Also, the increase in numbers of single members' households, which prefer smaller portion sizes, and the growing tendency to eat in transit between one commitment and another, is giving rise to an increasing amount of packaging food. But this raises a big problem. Today, one third of household waste is made up of food packaging. About 80% of the packaging is discarded after being used only once, as not all of them go to recycling. This volume helps to overfill landfills and the need of the new areas to dispose of the waste generated. Recently, a huge amount of litter was found floating in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with an area equal to twice the size of the continental United States. This high deposit of debris was formed with the garbage thrown by boats from oil rigs and coming from the continents re reunited due to the oceanic currents. It's believed that there is something around 100 million tons of debris drifting in the oceans. Most of it is disposable plastic, food packaging container, and plastic bags. But likely an increasing number of consumers are becoming aware of this problem and the need of for adopting more sustainable habits and finding more environmentally friendly solutions regarding food packaging. This has become one of the top priorities of the consumer public, in general urging companies to work hard to present new food packaging containers 
that not only can be recycled, but are also biodegradable or compostable. Biodegradable items break down into natural elements within a short period of time after being disposed of, usually in less than a year. The ability, ability to biodegrade in landfills helps to reduce the buildup of waste and by doing so also helps the environment. Similar to biodegradable, compostable materials go one step further by providing the earth with nutrients once the material has completely broken down. Despite requiring special composting conditions, if added to compost piles, most compostable packaging can turn to compost in just three months, contributing to a cleaner, safer, and healthier environment. The problem of plastic food packaging pollution is real, and it's up to all of us to adopt more sustainable habits and find more environmentally friendly solution for our daily packaging needs. Now, uh, packaging recycling and food packaging recycling is not so so easy. Uh, we uh, normally suggest a realistic solution. Not all food packaging can miraculously become all biodegradable and it does not meet all the needs of consumer. Should all the responsibility for packaging waste be placed on manufacturers who provide the consumer with materials that ensure the preservation of foods using advanced technologies such as plasma surface treatment, the use of multi-layer plastic acting as an oxygen barrier, and other external factors, extend expiry dates, ensure secure transport, and fight against the counterfeit allowing precise traceability, avoiding contamination, deterioration, and consequently the spread of serious epidemics. The responsibility for waste disposal around the world and the spread of waste across the oceans is to be shared between all the stakeholders. Certainly, the manufacturers but above all, the public authorities uh, and the consumers themselves. It is surely not the manufacturers who dump this waste that reaches the oceans. It is through education and regulation that solutions must come. Promoting recycling is certainly an excellent initiative and all means must be used to generalize this practice. But let's, let's be honest, not all waste can be recycled to allow a worthwhile outlet. Multi-layers and other devices that provide multi multiple benefits to food packaging make recycling sometimes impossible, economically speaking. The realistic solutions are only energy recovery by incineration or energy recovery 
by their transformation into fuel. Recently, uh, we are for a while talking about about uh, circular economy and let's see how food packaging meet the circular economy requirements. The circular economy package with recycling targets and other requirements has been formally agreed today by the European Parliament with only final approval needed by ministers before it becomes law. The figures agreed today confirm development in recent months and the main features of the package are municipal waste recycling target 55% by 2025. Um, excuse me, Alexander? Alexander, are you hearing me? Yes, but my microphone was uh, muted. Yeah, I uh, sorry. Uh, it's, uh, there is a problem with the uh, with the figures on the uh, document. Is uh, can you? I just uh, take a look on the original one. Uh, just a moment. It's, um, moment, moment, moment. Uh, This one, I don't know why it's, uh... ah, this is better. Yeah, I just uh, share my screen, but I'm not sure that you can uh, scroll. Uh, maybe you have to say something uh, if I should scroll it. Okay, I will, I will try. Uh, keep this figure now, uh, please. So, uh, uh, I was talking about the target, now the one uh, before, the, yeah. Uh, the targets of the European Union uh, uh, package uh, is to, uh, is con it concerns the three, three uh, uh, topics. Municipal waste recycling target, uh, no more than 10% of landfilling and separate the collection of textile and hazardous waste. Let's go through the figures. Uh, now please keep, keep the table please, uh, Alexander. Yeah. In the statement, the European Parliament said that improving waste management will not only benefit the environment, uh, climate and the human health. The uh, the four pieces of legislation are also part of the shift in EU policy towards a circular economy. Uh, so the targets are um, by 2025, at least 55 percent of municipal waste from households and uh, businesses should be recycled. The target will rise to 60 percent by 2030 and 65 percent by 2035. The definition of municipal waste includes material from small businesses and has been and still is a subject of discussion. Often it is seen as applying to small high street or similar type businesses where waste may be collected by a local authorities. The uh, packaging waste element of the circular economy is important as it will put pressure on packaging manufacturers uh, and will have an impact on local authority services with packaging producers under pressure 
to help put more money towards local authorities collection and publicity under the eu package 65 percent of packaging material will have to be recycled by 2025 and 70% by 2030. Separate targets are set for specific packaging such as paper and cardboard, plastics, glass, metal and wood. Uh, as you may know, Actually, one of the solution is the landfill, which is not the best one. A spokesman for the European Parliament explained that the draft law also limits the share of municipal waste being landfilled to a maximum of 10% by 2035. In 2014, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands and Sweden sent virtually no municipal waste to landfill, whereas Cyprus, Croatia, Greece, Latvia and Malta still landfilled more than three quarters of their municipal waste. Well, let's go through the principle of the uh, circular economy. What is a circular economy? Can you please move to the second slide? Thank you. The EU considers a circular economy as implying a reduction of waste to a minimum as well as reusing, repairing, refurbishing, and recycling existing materials and products. Moving towards a more circular economy will reduce pressure on the environment, enhance security of supply of raw material, increase competitiveness, innovation and growth, and create jobs. Well, in the, in the figure uh, you can see now, there are some of the practices that are influencing or underpinning the circular economy. To be uh, meeting the, the main principle of the circular economy, it's not only going to be recycled. We have to start when we design a new product, the eco design is part of the circular economy. One example, the best example to uh, highlight how plastic packaging contribute uh, to a real circular economy. The, the best example is the uh, water bottle. Let's go to the second slide, please, Alexander. Um, well, this one. Okay. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, the weight of a plastic packaging of 1.5 liter, which is the common capacity uh, of a water bottle, it was 50 grams and it was made of PVC. Uh, we move it today from 50 grams to 16 grams, which represent, which means reduction of the raw material production and consuming. Uh, this is uh, uh, an excellent uh, evolution uh, due to the the research the development of new material and compared to other packaging means well, uh, not only to defend plastic industry but if we compare the glass bottle to the plastic bottles 
common people will say uh, glass bottle is environmentally more friendly than plastic, which is absolutely wrong. One thing can demonstrate this. The weight of the glass bottle is about 600 grams compared to 16 grams of the plastic bottle. The energy consumed to produce the glass bottle compared to the energy needed for transformation of plastic is thousand times less. Uh, transportation of the glass bottle costs more energy than transportation of the plastic bottle. But this was to illustrate that eco design contributes to go through the circle, the real circular economy. Second slide, please. Following slide. Uh, the uh, the industrial ecology means is to to uh, to reduce uh, the uh, logistic chain of production. In case of the uh, bottle, the water bottle, production of the bottle itself is made in the same factory where the the uh, the bottle is filled i mean we produce on one side the the bottle and we fill it on the same almost in the same shape uh, and then we we are safe I just uh, lost the connection to Elias. Is this the same for the other? Yes, I cannot hear them. Uh, well, Elias. Elias, we lost you. Um, so maybe you can. Okay. Are you hearing yeah. now? Yeah, you are back. So, and I, uh, mid, uh, middle wise, I open again the presentation uh, so you can move it uh, by your own. Okay, uh, so um, okay, so the importance of the industrial ecology is to reduce the consumption by the transportation and the logistics. Another practice that concerns circular economy is the functionality. The main principle of the design. Uh, the 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 famous designer says the principle of design uh, functions function makes design and if we look to the figures here easy opening uh, a bottle with one hand uh, is part of the circular economy uh, how to hang the bottle in in your uh, uh, pocket is part of the functionality that is needed on circular economy. If you look to the right hand side bottle, which is a special bottle of water, including small boxes or your drugs, or people who are who needs to take uh, three four times drugs a day. So this is how the plastic bottles allows to be consumed. 
Now, uh, reusing is not really something that is possible when reusing a plastic bottle. We cannot, for, uh, for uh, hygienic reasons, it's unwise to reuse a plastic water bottle. But what we can do with a used uh, water bottle, we can reutilize the material. Armacell is a company who is recovering flakes of PET material from used bottles and it's making panels, insulation panels, you can see on the figures, of high performance insulation factor. Also, the, uh, the uh, Aeolian to produce uh, wind energy are filled inside by this foam. What you should also know that your iPhone is partially made of a recycled uh, PET bottle. Another principle, another example of uh, reutilizing the uh, plastic bottle, we make a flakes that are used to make fibers for textile and uh, clothes. The last principle of circular economy is recycling. Today, almost all manufacturers of a brand of waters are using 50% of recycled, a, a new bottle is made of 50% of recycled PET and 50% of virgin PET. Why only 50%? And this is the last chapter of my presentation. Uh, there is a conflict between the political regulation and the economy. Only 50% of recycled material can be used on food and drink packaging. This is a, you know, a European Union law. Uh, we can perhaps think that it is the influence of the oil lobby that would not allow to use more recycled material. In any case, the conflict exists. Let me give you an example, a recent example. Uh, a plant of recycling PVC in, in Italy, uh, owned by the, brand, the company Innovin, which is a, a Solvay brand, has decided to close its uh, Vinilup PVC recycle. This was mainly motivated by a stricter regulation concerning uh, recycled PVC, PVC which contains phthalate and plasticizers that are prohibited in the, uh, the new materials. This is an excellent example of the contradiction of the political world which on the one hand encourages recycling and on the other hand reinforces regulations. It's clear that many plastics that are now in the recycling market contain additives that are no longer allowed. What should be done knowing that the incineration is not very popular? The only solution would be a chemical recycling that brings the uh, molecule back to its original state and eliminates 
any anodized additive. So far, this solution is not economically viable. This is a situation identical to that of food packaging made of various material, not really dissociable. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I perhaps haven't went through the whole uh, packaging uh, topics, but I hope to have uh, gave you uh, a short view on the problems of recycling and packaging. Now we can go through the question, if someone has a question, I'm always available. Yeah. Please raise your hand if you have a question and then you will get the microphone. Lubos. You can speak. Please, not forget to activate your microphone. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello, everybody? Yes, hi. Uh, why is always the reason that they use only part of the recycled plastic for any plastic bags, etc.? You said about 50% of the virgin plastic. Is there some particular reason not to use fully recyclable materials for this? Uh, this is the, my, was my also my question. Is it uh, consequences of the lobbying of uh, oil manufacturers to keep uh, to keep selling virgin material because these uh, oil producers are not uh, selling recycled material they are only selling virgin materials total shell uh, BASF etc are selling only virgin material so, okay, so the question, is, question was replied. This is right? my personal, this is my personal uh, uh, thing about mm -hmm. the the political reason is perhaps to avoid contamination uh, of foods uh, by the uh, uh, the recycled material. Uh, some some manufacturers like uh, some big brands like Coca-Cola is pushing to uh, be authorized to use more. Uh, but we we don't know why uh, European Union uh, refuses to extend to uh, perhaps 60 or 80 percent of recycled material. But actually is the wrong. We don't know why exactly okay so so is it possible it's possible to use only recycled material but they don't want basically okay um, it seems like yeah. it is it's, it's important to mention that PET which is the material used for bottles now and uh, for water and for milk, etc., is uh, uh, made of molecular cha chain which is very compact and uh, it's it's uh, enough to wash the, the recycled material and heat it at 100 degrees to eliminate any any uh, non uh, uh, any additive. So it's a very compact material, which is not the case with other materials like polyethylene or polypropylene. Any other question? Lubush again. Okay. Yes, Lubush. Yes, can you give me uh, Are there some substitutes, material substitutes that are, you know, because now it's a way for biodegradability and all the 
biomaterials that can be used. Do you think that the, the reason why they are not used is a price or it's a factor of, as you said, the lobbying of the oil producers? Um, I don't think in that case it is uh, a problem of lobbying because these uh, companies are also uh, spending some uh, amounts in the research of biodegradable and compostable materials. Uh, the reason now is that we have not enough quantity produced and uh, we have to be uh, we have to think on the consequences of such practices. Uh, compostable and biodegradable material are not made from oil. They are made from uh, vegetables. So, uh, are we going to uh, to stop uh, cultivating uh, vegetables for for uh, for food? I mean, for for the consumption of people of the human people to make plastic, or uh, uh, the the only biodegradable material uh, can be made from the compostable uh, vegetable, which is a good recycling of these materials. But cultivating lands uh, to make plastic would not be uh, well good solution because there are continents where people have nothing to eat and and will not be uh, very popular to uh, to cultivate lands to make plastics. Okay. Any other question? No. If not, we uh, we will stay at this stage. Thank you for your attention, and hope to see you on the next. Uh, well, sorry, the the next webinar uh, dates are the 25th of September at the same time. It will talk about traceability, protection, and information. The 10th of October with the topic on quality over everything and the 8th of November with the topic new materials and modern technology. I would also remind you on the trainings that are uh, planned or scheduled on 2019 for USA, USA, Canada, and China. Thank you for your attention. See you later. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Elias. And thank you to thank all. Thank you, Elias. Thank you all.